So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much uh, to Paul for the generous uh, introduction. And I must say, uh, it has been a great collaboration over the last uh, uh, five to six years because our business began uh, with advertising and paid communications. Um, we wanted to establish ourselves within the PR uh, industry, and uh, it was a great forum to, as it were, l run our flag up the pole and launch, and that's why we are still here doing it and still enjoying it after all this time. Um, I'm not going to talk uh, to you about us because uh, there'll be plenty of time in the next uh, couple of days to do that. Um, what I really wanted to share with you uh, for about five or ten minutes um, is observations that I've made uh, over the past five or six months going to conferences, listening to eminent speakers talking, uh, speakers who are from independent agencies or network agencies or outside our business completely, because it does seem to me that there is a, a feeling in, in the business that we are either at a point of crisis or a point of opportunity. And in many ways, it's like a little parallel with the advertising business. And if you're in the advertising agency these days, you're, you're not sure if you are embarrassed about that or proud of it. And I have a little sense that there's something of a dichotomy in the PR business as to whether we are proud to be public relations people or whether we feel that's almost an embarrassingly old-fashioned title. Um, so I wanted just to look at a few thoughts that may have led us to believe there's a crisis, and then a thought that may lead us to believe that it's an opportunity. So let's look at crisis. And these are all verbatim quotes, uh, some taken out of context. And if that's the case, I apologize to those who made it. Some made by people in this room who don't know they're going to be quoted and others uh, made by other luminaries of the industry. Um, what is this crisis about? It's a crisis of many things. It's a crisis of media. This was a, a, a quote from um, uh, Yomi, who runs Burst and Mostella in Nigeria, um, about his traditional media of newspapers. Nobody reads newspapers, he said, except old people looking to see who died. Um, and that's our industry, for the most part, for the great majority of the history of public relations. There's a crisis in talent. This is Tanya Hughes, who runs Sermo in the UK. It's a very good independent agency. Um, PR scene a bit fluffy at all about events, so we struggle to attract millennials. Um, that's a crisis. Uh, is there a crisis in media relations? Uh, this is Yomi again. He gets to be in twice. There's only one person who does. It's Yomi. And he's saying, you know, in the past, it was critical to know editors. And now we often don't. We're often taking news from social media, learning from bloggers, influencers, and that assumption is kind of disappearing. Um, is there a crisis in communication? This is from an academic conference, uh, Professor Marteau at Cambridge University, about information. You know, we used to think that public relations was about disseminating appropriate information, but actually, information doesn't always change behavior. This professor did a whole st um, uh, study on health and well-being and how to avoid people doing things like drinking to excess or smoking or not taking exercise, not eating healthily, and she found risk information does not change behavior. You need environmental cues, creativity, to put it another way. Uh, a crisis in skills. Um, Paul very kindly came and talked at one of our conferences, and uh, he actually quoted him verbatim. This may have been a little off the cuff, but uh, half the people working in the PR business two years ago are not fit for purpose today. Doesn't mean they may not have evolved, but what they were doing even two years ago is not what the market is demanding today. Crisis in revenue. This is Pascal, um, who's uh, one of the senior people of uh, MSNL in Europe. Content generates a much better level of fees than press releases. 30% of MSNL's content income is now from content. How, much, how many of us talked about content five years ago? Uh, a crisis in knowledge. This is from the European Communication Summit and their publication um, uh, every year looking at uh, the practitioners on the client side, the corporate side. Only 21% of agencies use big data, and mostly they use it for general planning, not targeting. And yet the communication industry, uh, the media industry, the media buying and targeting industry is using big data very, very uh, surgically uh, to target people. I, I was in the office of a media agency on Tuesday in New York, and they had on the, on the shelf uh, a packet of uh, toenail fungus cream treatment. And uh, they said, we can target individuals who have started treating their toenail fungus exactly two months ago, because that's when they switched brand. And you can't do this in Europe yet, but you can do it in the US. 
and it is so critical for all of us who are communicating to audiences that we're using this and many of us are, are frankly not. Um, a crisis in HR. You know, this is still true. This is another academic, uh, again, from a study, not an opinion. Men are promoted on experience, on potential, and women are still promoted on experience. There is a gender inequality, which we all know, and we all do talk about addressing, and we still need to do. You have to already have the experience if you're a woman, and you don't if you're a man. This is wrong. Um, a crisis, last but not least, uh, a, a great friend and an agency I admire hugely is um, uh, Avian Media in India, Nitin Mantri. Um, and uh, he just put this as an off-the-cuff remark. Content and distribution through multiple channels is at the heart of our business today. Um, wait a minute, I thought this was media relations. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's a change. But at the same time, we see opportunity. We see a number of opportunities. We see a number of opportunities. One is, is in what clients want. And I've heard this phrase. I heard it first from Nina Bibby, who, who's head of marketing at, at O2, the... Um, uh, telco in the UK, uh, but I've, many other people have said it. I just heard it her first from here. And she says, clients today, we want outcomes and not deliverables. You know, I'm an old enough to remember when we still measured success in column inches. Um, it's not that. It's not even engagement. It's action. It's behavioral. It's behavioral change that people want. And it's a very tough, much tougher environment that we are in. But if we can deliver it, it's measurable and it generates budgets, and gen budgets generate revenues. So I, for me, this is an opportunity and by no means a crisis or a threat. Um, we see clients who urgently need help. Um, this is another academic. It's Rupert Younger of Oxford, uh, at the side business school in Oxford. Um, and he talks about the need, as we all talk about, for people to interact today. The days of the press release or the advertisement are old school. The days of interaction between stakeholders on an ongoing basis are what we all deal with. And you know, here's an academic saying, companies, and he means senior management of companies, CEO and general counsel, are scared of conversations. We need to help our clients. If we can, we will get that seat back at the top table that we all seek, and some of us probably have, don't have so much as we used to. Um, what is a PR about? It is, as often said, it's got that second word in it, which is relations. We are good at relationships. The most successful PR firms we meet around the world are often the ones that have that relation of trust with senior management in their company, and it's not just because of what they know, it's because of who they are. Um, I wanted to talk about leadership for about 30 seconds, and it, it was a big impression made on me, um, again, at the European Client uh, Conference, um, when they had two uh, very senior headhunters uh, who are headhunting at CEO and managing director level. And what do they look for? And one was uh, Richard Marshall from Corn Ferry. Um, and he gave a very traditional overview for me of what a, what a leader should have today. He said, we look for stature, courage, experience, seasoned advisors who have a point of view and drive it through. And I felt quite disillusioned because I felt he's living in the era of the press release and the broadcast medium we tell people. Um, and then we had a wonderful lady, uh, Gizem Begemans, a Turkish lady. Um, she's head of the uh, uh, communications and public affairs practice at Egon Zender. And she says something quite different, and I think this is more where our opportunity lies. It's we look for people who can master complexity, who can orchestrate creativity, who can grow emotional commitment, who are anchored in society. Very different. And the way she speaks and addresses that, and the kind of people they look for and how they profile people, very different from the Corn Ferry approach. Uh, because she's looking at people who can live within an ecosystem. And if there's one word I kind of, that, that for me sums it up as to where we stand today, it's we stand as part of an ecosystem, which impacts on us and we impact on it, as opposed to a controlling system which is designed to do something and do it well and continue doing it and do it again. Content, distribution, outcomes, the words we talked about, they're not created by agencies in isolation. They're created in agencies which have to have far more skills than you can find in any single agency, let alone an agency that has a particular expertise or skill. Um, we talk about content, but content needs to look at trends. It needs to develop stories. Sometimes it's experiential. It needs social interaction. It needs audiovisual. Uh, very soon, we will start to need skills in virtual reality and even more complicated, 
but potentially more rewarding in augmented reality. Do we have all of these skills in-house? Almost certainly not. Can we develop the knowledge within our companies to commission people with those skills or to partner with people in those skills? For me, that's the opportunity. And similar kind of different skill sets, and there's probably 20 or 30 uh, listed here if we had put all of them on the chart. They are things which we don't need everybody to have, but we need everybody to know someone and have someone in your company that understands these and can partner up with people that have them in more depth. Um, it's why we as a company, the Network One, launched this initiative um, earlier this year, and we'll do it again in June in 2017, and I would uh, warmly invite any of you who are able to join it, and it's a, it's a little different from the summit that we're here today. It's not more valuable or less valuable, it's different, but what this is about is a summit for leaders of independent agencies from all disciplines. So there are, cr there are advertising people, there are social media people, there are media planning and buying people, because what we found is there's a great deal to learn from talking to people in, in other disciplines. Um, and I was also delighted and very grateful that uh, uh, Paul gave us his support. As you can see, he is in full flow at that particular moment back last June. Um, we can, are happy to talk to anybody about that at the break, or you can uh, find uh, where we are for next year on the, um, the Indie Summit website. Um, but it's also an internal ecosystem. And that's really what led us to the theme for the early part of this afternoon. Um, inside an agency, an agency itself is an ecosystem. And that ecosystem used to have certain specific parts. It had media relations professionals. It had client management professionals. It had uh, writers. Um, but those parts have kind of changed. And today, what is the optimum way to structure or configure an agency. We could talk about it in theory, or we could talk about it with people who have built new agencies within the last three to five years. And that's what we thought would make a very interesting pair of panels um, at the beginning of this. And I actually, I'm gonna uh, shout him out uh, personally, Josh Rosenberg, um, because he happened to come to my office, and uh, Josh and his colleagues came out of a very fine agency called Embooth, um, and said, uh, we're starting our own agency, I wanna talk to you about it. And we talked for quite a while about how, how he's structuring it, and I will leave him to explain that rather than me, um, but I, that's what inspired us for, for this, this set of panels. Um, because I think if there's one thing that I'd leave this as a sum up, uh, it's this quote from Dana Anderson, who's an amazingly inspiring speaker. If you ever get the chance to hear, please do. Uh, she's, uh, head of, uh, she's global CMO for, for Mondelez. Um, and she said at, uh, at Cannes earlier this year, you used to be hired for what you knew, and now you're hired for what you're willing to learn. And I thought that's a lovely little segue through to this conference, as hopefully we are here to learn.